Okay, so today we are going to be talking about Jane Austen and specifically, where should you start? Where should you go next? How great are these books? So I have been on a Jane Austen binge lately and I've been loving it, but I've also been getting a lot of comments on where should I start with Jane Austen? And I don't have an answer for that because each of her books are so incredibly unique and a lot of them are doing very different things. So I figured let's make a video and talk about what each book's basic premise and intentions are, and then you can decide where you should read next or first. Also, this edition will be linked in the description if you are as enamored by it as I am. So I'm just gonna talk about these in the order that they're in for this set. So no particular order as far as my ranking, that's coming later. I have two Jane Austen videos coming for you. This one, a guide to Jane Austen, and then we're gonna rank them and talk about my favorite to least favorite or least favorite to favorite of the books as well as the protagonist. First book we're gonna talk about is Mansfield Park. Mansfield Park follows a young girl who is born into a very poor family and is sent off to be raised by her aunt and uncle and that family. They are far more wealthy, their family is in far higher esteem, and they really look down on Fanny. Fanny is a very shy and quiet young girl, and she's pushed around a lot by her family, but she also has a very quiet strength, and I love her so much. This is probably the most controversial, not controversial, the most, this is, this is the book that has the most mixed reviews. People either really enjoy it or they hate it. And it does seem that it's uh, the most negatively <laughs> reviewed of her books. And that's mostly because this is a book that discusses morality a lot more and it's a lot less lighthearted than her other books, as well as having a more shy lead, which some people don't seem to like. And it's, frankly, her most boring book. This is not where I would recommend you start unless you just really actually, uh, my friend just picked up Mansfield Park as her first Jane Austen because she's very, very shy and really wanted to read a book from a shy protagonist. But for the most part, I would say probably not the best place to start, even though it's still a great book. Next is Persuasion. Persuasion is about a young woman who is in love with a man and engaged to him, and then she's persuaded to back out of that engagement by her family. After she backs out, he leaves and he's gone for years, and then he comes back. And this is a second chance romance. This follows them reuniting and figuring out what their relationship looks like now, if they even want a relationship now. And it would also be considered one of her more slow moving stories, especially there's a gap there in the middle where not a lot happens. But I will say that the resolution of this book, the ending of this book is one of my favorite persuasion, or one of my favorite Austen endings. Sense and Sensibility is about a family where the father has passed away and his estate is going to be passed on to his son from his first marriage. And after some manipulation from that son's wife, he decides to get, not give them any of the inheritance and they're forced to move out of their manor and they're in a much more difficult situation. They move away and our protagonist in this one is also more shy, but her sister is very much not. And I love the dynamic between these sisters in this book. Uh, they handle their situation very differently. Uh, the sister is more outwardly rude and not happy about this new society that they have to get used to and these new routines that they have to do. Whereas our protagonist also hates it all, but the way she deals with it is by passively mocking it and leaning into it a little bit extra hard. This book is full of so much scandal and excitement and you really don't know who our protagonist is going to end up with or how it's all going to resolve. And while this is Austin's first published novel and does read that way a little bit, it doesn't flow as beautifully as most of her novels do, I still think that it's a ride. Pride and Prejudice, I'm not gonna spend much time on because you know about it. Lizzie Bennet is snarky and sassy and speaks her mind and uh, Mr. Darcy doesn't. He has a lot of pride 
because he's very wealthy and doesn't trust the people around him to have good intentions with him. And she is very prejudiced because she pretty much just assumes that he sucks. This is a story that has a lot of family scandal and drama and a lot of character growth within the characters in order for them to come together. Emma is Austin's comedy. This is following an intentionally annoying protagonist who has deemed herself a matchmaker. She is wealthy um, and she is proud of that. And she sort of has this mentality of, I'm gonna get everybody else married because I'm really good at matching people up, but I'm going to stay single because with my status, I can get away with it without being called a spinster. And I, that's what I want. She is a very flawed character who ends up causing a lot of drama and heartbreak through her intrusiveness. And it's such a funny, funny, funny book. Um, there's, uh, Jane Austen likes to lean into characters and make them over the top to kind of prove a point about them. And I would say that she does that to an extreme in this book and I love it. I thought this book was hilarious. This is a book that some people find really annoying. Um, I think part of the reason a lot of people find this book annoying is because they don't go, in, don't go in knowing it's a comedy and they take it a little bit more seriously than it needs to be taken. But also Emma is just intentionally annoying. So you might find her annoying. I found her hilarious. Also with Emma not wanting to get married yet having chemistry with several characters within the novel, you really don't know who she's gonna end up with, which adds so much fun and excitement to it. Northanger Abbey is also really over the top. This is Austen's satire. So this is about a character who loves gothic fiction and loves it a little bit too much to the point where she kind of thinks she's in a gothic novel. And when she goes to visit a family, they have a gothic manor and she's looking for the secret passageways and trying to find the mystery and determines that someone has killed his wife. And there's so much unnecessary drama, but in the funniest way, because this character is so over the top and um, the chemistry between her and her love interest and his way of calling her out, but also just being charmed by her ridiculousness is fantastic. Also the narrator, um, Jane Austen did a really different thing with this book with her narration where the narrator is actually speaking to the reader, which is one of my favorite tropes. And the narrator will interrupt the story regularly to provide commentary on these characters and to just talk about other things because sometimes the narrator just wants to talk about stuff not related to this story. And um, I loved that. It's, it's also, a hilarious book and uh, very, uh, a very fast read. I think it's her shortest full novel. And I had oh, so much fun reading it. Last book in this collection, I'm not gonna talk about because I haven't read yet. I haven't read Austen's short stories or her unfinished works uh, that got published after she passed away. So I'm not knowledgeable on those. I'm just talking about her main novels, and those are them. So that's your main premise for each of these books, as well as kind of the themes that they follow. I'll also talk about protagonist a little bit. Pride and Prejudice, Emma and Northanger Abbey all have very outgoing, bold and ostentatious uh, characters. Mansfield Park, Sense and Sensibility and Persuasion all have much more shy and quiet main characters. Each of these are much more slow moving novels that focus more on the romance. Whereas these three, Northanger Abbey, Pride and Prejudice and Emma are all much more fast paced, um, make you laugh, which all of Austen's works I think are funny and charming and so much fun to read, but these are more fast paced, uh, goofy and fun uh, with still a lot of deeper meaning, except maybe North Anger, Anger Abbey. It's definitely her least uh, intricate and deep novel. It's really just a lot of fun, um, but all of her books have deeper meaning and deeper themes explored that are impactful and beautiful, but also just charming and fun. I really don't think there is a bad Austen book. Even my least favorite Austen book is 
wonderful. <laughs> and um, I do think that probably the best place for people to start, if you're looking for a romance, it would be either Sense and Sensibility or Persuasion. Lots of drama, Second Chance, also lots of drama. Her books always have drama. For something fast paced and funny and charming, you have Pride and Prejudice and Emma. And for her probably fastest paced and silliest and easiest to just breeze through, Northanger Abbey. Really every single Austen novel, in my opinion, is charming and fantastic for its own reasons and I love each of these dearly. I think everyone has its own style and its own ridiculous but amazing characters and I think that, I mean, I love each and every one of them and I think that where you want to start or where you want to go next isn't really something that I can give a broad suggestion for. It's It completely depends on what you're in the mood for and what you want because each of her novels are so different from the last. So there is a short guide uh, for where to start, where to go next, uh, what to what to do <laughs> with Austin novels if you're new. Um, if you aren't new, I would love to hear if there are any things that you would tweak or change as far as recommendations that I gave. If you are new and you have now decided which Austin novel you want to pick up first, please chat with me about it in the comments. I will have my Austin Austin book and character ranking video up very soon, uh, so keep an eye out for that. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.